Atheist Nomads, episode 151, Christian Rock with Shannon Lowe. The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo-hahs. Please be advised. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Hello, everybody. Joining us uh, for today's interviews, my lovely wife, Lauren. Hello, everyone. And joining us today is our guest, Shannon Lowe from the Order of Elijah Band. Uh, we talked about him a couple episodes ago, and uh, he was a Christian rocker who... Uh, metal, metal, metal. Yeah. Anyway, uh, who is now uh, has come out as an atheist? Shannon, welcome to Atheist Nomads. Hey, how's it going, man? So, let's get this out of the way. What yeah. style of music would you play? What, like, ah, uh, man, you know, everyone labels us with all these different genres, like you know, deathcore and metalcore. <laughs> uh, I, I yeah. think that we're just, you know, like, like I consider us like an experimental metal band. Like, okay. Uh, we don't you know, follow the exact formula that every metal band kind of follows, but <clears throat> we're definitely a, a heavier, mm-hmm. a heavier band, if you would. Well, just about okay. every band has their own uh, genre nowadays. To an this extent, is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, I, oh, I don't always do metal, but when I do, it's usually Lords of Acid. I, I'm a I'm a fan of metal, so I, I've I've listened to a little bit of your music and uh, pretty good and definitely better than the Christian rock that I listened to when I was a Christian. There's more than three chords, <laughs> hooray! <laughs> it was uh, pretty uh, horrifying for me when I, I I just left the church, but still went to see some of the bands that I had really liked. Uh, they were all performing in South Bend, Indiana, and I was at uh, the Adventist Seminary in Michigan, um, just across the border from there. And one of my favorite bands at the time was Cutlass. And they played three of their songs. They all had the same exact tune with the same three chord progression. Yes. It was just a different key for each song. And it was like, Key change! Holy shit, this is the most boring, uninspired music ever. <laughs> so it's I'm- not as bad as Christian pop. <laughs> But it's pretty bad. So I'm, I'm glad that you uh, took a little different approach. So uh, tell us a bit about about your uh, your band and, and how you got started in the Christian music uh, field. Um, we've been, I think we've actually been, um, we've been formed since like 2008. Uh, whenever this band first formed, uh, a few months before that I had quit another band because I was like on fire for Jesus and... I didn't feel like that band was going the direction I wanted it to. More Jesus! It. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, um, uh, after I, after I, the more I, the deeper I got into the music industry, as far as the Christian music industry side, I realized that it, it was just, just as equally as corrupt as, uh, as the regular music industry. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's, there's a large, a large focus on marketing and uh, and and just finding the mighty dollar in the end. It's it. There's there's not much of a difference in between uh, the what you, people would think the music industry compared to what they think the Christian music industry. Only difference is they're selling a, a fake cure for a fake disease along with it. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. So. What got you into the music yeah. in the first place? Uh, music, uh, you know, a long time ago, uh, I was I was like ten, and uh, they had the first call for like uh, band for us to go into band, and I didn't go the first few days. I was in a brand new school. My my parents had just moved to Grove, Oklahoma, so it was like a big, you know, like culture shock for me, and. Uh, I remember the the girl that I like crushed on every day that I never talked to and like you know she sat across the room I think she was from Joplin and I was like oh man I remember having that in common and she went to band I was like oh, I want to go to band because she no longer <laughs> we went to recess and she went to didn't go to band anymore and she wasn't on on recess on the other side of the recess 
field that I could, you know, watch her. So I was like, I'm going to go to band. I went to band. And then uh, that night they had uh, like a thing to buy your musical instrument. And I told my mom, I was like, oh, mom, I want to do it so bad. I want to want to <laughs> be in band. She's like, you've dropped down a baseball and basketball and everything else. If I buy you this damn <laughs> instrument, you're going to stick to it. Yeah. So we went there and I was really stubborn. I wanted a saxophone, which was kind of like one of the more expensive ones. And uh, so she got me the damn sax. And then guess who dropped out of band the next day? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Man, the girl was gone. And I was yeah. like stuck there with this instrument. And then I hated it. I was like, ah. Okay, uh, quick quick question, the, though. Whatever happened to the saxophone? Um, well, uh, that saxophone, um, not really a, a really awesome story. Whenever I used to be in drugs, I think I pawned it for drugs. <laughs> um, okay. But uh, I can still play saxophone. Yeah, I don't do drugs anymore. We're talking like over a decade That's ago. That's wicked happened. awesome, though. Um, <laughs> I, I think that you know, the weird thing about saxophone is... Still yet to this day, whenever I'm reading sheet music or, or something like that, if it's in treble clef, uh, I, as I recognize the notes, I'm like fingering it on the saxophone <laughs> nice. in my head. That's just, awesome. I'm like, oh yeah, F. <laughs> I do the nice. same. So were you uh, raised religious? <laughs> uh, kind of. My, my family wasn't super religious, but they sent me to church. Um, they believed. Uh, my, my, I was kind of a... Uh, not a badly broken home, but I mean, my, my parents argued the majority of my childhood. And uh, I, I would go to church on a church bus, and I, I I didn't really get too much out of anything like that until I'd say I was 20. I think I was 20, 19 or 20, whenever I really started like learning about uh, Christianity and stuff like that. So I was kind of a late bloomer. Okay, I mean, so you I got exposed to it. You got into it at the point that most kids are dr starting to drift away. Yeah, this is true. Um, uh, I think that uh, I have probably had to do with where I was from. I was in Grove, Oklahoma at the time, and I mean, like I live in Joplin now, which is a part of the Bible Belt, but mm -hmm. over in Oklahoma, it's like that's just what every i mean every two blocks there's a church and uh and they're packed and they're most of them uh at least back then was a lot more like uh you know uh traditional type churches and stuff mm -hmm. where these days it seems like you can't keep up with the market unless you're moving towards a non-denominational where you kind of work with uh you know, if they don't have the screens in the background with like a laser show, your church probably don't have more than 30 <laughs> Me people. Mega churches. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, it, so it sounds like you completely missed Striper. Just too bad. Yeah. That was a little bit before my time. I, I was in the Def Leppard and Bon Jovi back then. Nice. Okay. And you mentioned uh, a, a period where you were into drugs. Was that uh, before your uh, coming to Jesus? Well, that was during Jesus. During, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. A little bit before, you know, definitely before. Um, I had a, a, a time where I, I was really into some hardcore drugs, you know, in my early 20s and stuff like that. Uh, I got part of this band, um, and it was I was the only Christian member. Whenever I joined the band, I was, like, super Christian, and it was, like, shortly after I'd been baptized. And then the band, um, we, I, we got... I mean, we didn't get real big, but we did some touring, and we just felt like we were we wanted to be rock stars so bad. And, mm -hmm. uh, so we just kind of lived like a life of just drinking and sex and drugs and stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I we start. I was in another band that was a little bit more serious, and I, I was backing out of all of that, um, all of the drugs, and I had, I actually quit for a think about five years and then at the time my wife she turned 21 and uh and we were married and so you know i i felt i felt really like an idiot that i couldn't have a few beers with her uh, whenever she wanted to drink so that's kind of where it started back up again and then after we got a divorce and i mean i just plummeted into alcoholism mm. and was just like 
hammer and whiskey every night. And, uh, and uh, you know, I know everyone's got different reasons. <clears throat> I don't, I don't divinely credit atheism for I- anything like that, you know, but I think the mental, the mental aspect of, you know, somewhat enlightenment from, you know, being able to shed religion like that was definitely some of the motivation and the power it gave me, you know, mentally to be able to overcome that. And, uh, Mm. which, you know, I, I've had people try to tell me, they're like, well, you don't know if a God was really there doing that (laughs) and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm like, look, I believe that, you know, maybe AA works for some people, but, I mean, it is a psychological battle to overcome addiction. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are born uh, genetically weak to certain addictions, uh, you know, uh, depending on on your family history or or how you were brought up, you know. So uh, it's a psychological war for all of us. I mean, oh, yeah. So, you know, I I, I, I don't credit God, but I mean, I I will say that – but releasing religion is what, what gave me the uh, motivation to not only give up alcohol, but to get into college and personal oh, health care and all this other stuff. Just because I was like, science is badass. Well, <laughs> well science is badass. We, we, we it is. tend to do that. But yeah. I think shedding the religion probably made you just a stronger individual. Mm-hmm. Like maybe you felt more of like a whole person that you could just easier easier to control, too, when you don't have this otherworldly thing to that you're always bowing to hey shannon did you ever get into aa no my dad did some aa programs whenever i was younger and yeah. i remember there but um uh, even every time i've i've really uh overcome something like that i feel like i've done it myself i really haven't never used like a group or anything mm-hmm. um hey guys uh, yeah yeah do it all right and so we will take our first break now while Shannon goes to uh, take care of his kid. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low price, full featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A R C H W A Y hosting.com. Hey, we're also brought to you by listeners just like you. Find out how you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash atheist nomads. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash atheist nomads. We were thinking you could bring your four year old on and we could ask her about all of your new friends that you're making <laughs> and how fun that would be. But, um, <laughs> no. Her, her, her answers will be pretty chaotic. She might just start <laughs> telling you about like Monster High or something instead. Uh. <laughs> Uh, she's in there eating right now, so uh, maybe after she eats, I'll bring her in before okay. nap. <laughs> all right. Like that. Well, we should all right. go ahead and get started. Yes. Then. So, all right. So it w- you you were definitely making it sound like it was you losing your religion and getting off the drugs and alcohol was at about the same time. Uh, is that correct? Um, no, uh, it, it, uh, I, uh, I, I was probably, um, heavily, heavily in alcoholism for like <laughs> about half a year after I began giving up religion. Okay. Um, mm. yeah, uh, what, I think I was calling myself an agnostic about the time that I quit drinking. And I started reading a lot whenever I quit drinking, and uh, that it was slowly after that that I uh, I decided that you know that I didn't qualify under the agnostic mm-hmm. title. Of. <laughs> All right, so what you were okay when when you're in the the, the Christian music uh, sphere? Obviously, you are you know that, that's in pretty deep. Not not necessarily the same as with a as as for like for a pastor but pretty deep into the the christian culture uh what was the what would you say were the steps uh specifically on the the religion side that that led you out well um for a while i mean i i considered the band a ministry for a while uh and then whenever uh 
I, I was part of the church, a church here in Joplin for a while. I was uh, on the worship team. I played guitar, and then I was uh, a leader in a in like a teenage group, and um, I that kind of fell apart. And I still believed for a while after that, but I returned to that church, and I wasn't really part of the the uh, the staff again. But I was just going and. Um, it was a, a church sermon that I went to where they were discussing Elisha and the bears whenever Elisha uh, uh, cursed the kids in um, the name of God and a couple bears came out and ripped them apart. Yeah, and uh, I'd heard that story, but I had overlooked it, you know. And after I, after I heard that, I went home and I looked it up and I started looking online. So you're like, no, that can't be right. Things, like, uh yeah i was like man that, so, uh of course you know um with as many secular or you know uh, atheistic type sites that are out there as soon as you google some of that shit you know mm -hmm. I, I remember i was looking up at it and i i was reading apologetics and apologetics are are uh, like sometimes there's just too many of them even if it kind of makes sense you're like well there's another excuse over here that's – eventually you're like, you guys are searching for, for excuses uh, to, to justify, you know, children getting hit into the ground, you know, and pride. You know, I, uh, I, I, I cannot find where um, a god would, you know, uh, be proud of a people that brutally murders infants, and mm -hmm. I don't need any justification from a counselor or or you know, <laughs> any expert it doesn't take an expert on ethics to be able to realize that those stories are brutally just unethical oh yeah and yeah. um <laughs> i believe it was whenever i started I, I, so the, the only answers that really made sense to me was found in shit like the skeptics annotated bible and and things <laughs> like that because you, you're you're reading through these stories and of course once you know you stumble upon that that thought process and all it takes is one because you, you as a Christian, it's not like you haven't heard horrible stories. You've heard horrible stories in the Bible and you reconcile, you reconcile. And then the, it just eventually, you know, it's like, Oh yeah, this dude murdered his virgin daughter in exchange for victory in a war. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about human sacrifice that the God of Abraham has an obsession <laughs> with that. Yeah, that shit gets his dick hard. I don't know. Something about That's blood crazy. sacrifice. <laughs> it goes all the way back to like pigeons into volcanoes and shit like that. It's just it just seems like stems off of that. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of <laughs> ironic that your band is the Order of Elijah. Yeah. And it was yeah. the story of Elisha that his servant who uh helped lead you away from Christianity. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess he took a good step in it. You know, wow. the story of Elijah is pretty mythological if you, if you think about it. Uh, you know, the riding into heaven on, on chariots of fire. I mean, that just sounds like some Achilles shit. Yeah, that's like right that. out of Greek right and, there. That's Yeah, that's that's straight Greek mythology and uh um I really think that the name, the name Elijah still fits us honestly. Uh, we had a lot of Christians get really upset. They wanted us to change our name. Oh. And I was, you know, like, somebody's going to get upset about name, something, you know, it's like, you know, uh, it, you can think of like other metal bands named Lamb of God uh -huh. and yeah. Black Sabbath. They're not Christian at all. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hang on. Just a yeah, second. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Daddy. Daddy! Daddy! <laughs> that shit escalated quick. That's funny. <laughs> Doesn't take long. It, our dogs do the same thing. Bark! Bark! Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Oh, up my nose. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so uh, how are... I the... apologize for having to toggle. Uh, uh, no, no problem. It, it's all good. <laughs> so, We're okay. So, uh... Uh, how have, by and large, how have the fans taken this this uh, process? Because you took the bands officially secular uh, first, right? Oh, nice. 
So now we're yeah, that was my talk. first goal was to step us away. Yeah, I mean, you dropped but, but, a whole yeah. uh, label, right? Uh, no, my goal was to to step away from um, the the Christian title, and we did that in 2015. About the time that I really kind of shed the whole faith and stuff, I went to the guys. I was like, "Hey, I don't think we should be called a Christian band anymore." I mean, you guys, they 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 were with me. They kept up with all of it, so they knew where I was going. You know, with mm-hmm. my with my whole uh, philosophy inside and, and stuff. So. Uh, they they were excited. They're like, oh, finally, Shannon. You know, they're like, we're, we're, we're totally down to do that. And, they're like, great. I have somebody on speed dial. Hold uh, on. So, <laughs> uh, whenever I announced it, I did it in an interview. So, uh, it, it didn't go over the way I thought it would. It really didn't separate us from the Christian community very much at all. Um, mm-hmm. I mean. I couldn't even take a stance for like LGBT rights without just getting completely bombarded with, with, I mean, you know, you know how it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I, I, I remember just saying, I was putting up some memes trying to ward them away. I was like, I was like, I need to get some of these fundamentalists out of here because our, our fan list is just chock full of them because and it mainly comes from we we were uh, part of a Christian label for a few years. And I think that's where a lot of them come from. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of them. Mm-hmm. That's a very fundamentalist label. Yeah, Zoe. Zoe is a cute name. Mm-hmm. That is a good name. You need to finish very your French. meatballs first. <laughs> but I want a cookie. <laughs> Dude, I just, I get it, you know? Uh-huh. All right, finish what you got. Oh, all right, sorry. I feel for him. It's all good. <laughs> it's like I don't want meatballs anymore. I know there's something better out there than meatball. I think it's a cookie <laughs> or a watermelon or something. That's probably the truth. <laughs> oh, man. A little bit of salt on my watermelon, I'm good. Oh, mm. It's it's that time of year, isn't it? So, all right. So, so you're trying to get rid of the, some of the more fundamentalist uh, fans. Uh, how, how'd that how'd that work out? <laughs> Uh, it was just making our page really negative. Um, <laughs> uh, whenever, yeah. whenever I, I I put up, whenever I put up the the testimony that friendly atheist picked up, um, yeah. I was actually responding to a fan with that. He had hit me up. I was getting a lot of mean shit, and then this one dude hit me up, and he's a Christian. And he's like, "Hey, man," he he was just really polite, and the, his approach was really genuine. And he just asked me, and he's like, "What happened?" I know that there's something, something happened. He's like, he's like, I'm not judging you no matter what the story is. I started and I, I was like, hang on, I'll respond in a few days. Uh, whenever I got time and I did I sitting there typing it up and I just decided to make it public. And then, um, I mean, ever since then, it's definitely been a big step away. Whenever I typed it up, I, I did not expect the, the, um, the positive, uh, reaction that we had i mean uh it's made me for one re- really happy i did because the response we got from the uh, atheist community has just been really awesome uh there's been a few of them that you know just don't dig the music and stuff like that and they kind of see it as a joke but uh m- for the most part i've literally went through hundreds of, of messages of new fans people that are went through the same thing people telling me their testimony. Now, uh, I would say that our old fans, it's kind of like a it's kind of a black and white thing. Either they're just right there with us and they don't give a shit or and you know, they're like I love the music, I don't care what you guys do, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, you be do. And then you have the other half who I I honestly don't know why they won't go away. <laughs> we post our music They'll talk shit on the music. They talk that like the mu- like songs that they used to, to think was great. Now they're up in there saying that it's horrible guitars, and I mean they're, they're just making fun of anything on it they can. And uh, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, why do you follow us? It's almost like they're a glutton for punishment. And uh, you know, since um, the past few weeks, I'll, I'll put up uh, like uh, more of an atheistic type meme. I put up some Ricky Gervais type stuff. Mm-hmm. Ricky Gervais. Uh, boy, they don't even know how to handle that. They're like, ah! <laughs> okay, hang on. I think that's about good for a break.
We love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com, tweet us at atheistnomads, send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads, or better yet, call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. You know, the loudest people out there, though. Uh, no, I, on, on what I was saying a while ago, uh, what, um, what, one of the things we have heard a lot of is, you know, whenever I do post something that's kind of a challenging uh, ch- challenge, is just the philosophy of Christianity, they, and they get so upset. And they, uh, they often say, like, hey, we get it, we understand that you do that, you believe this now, but, but the, you should let people believe what they want to believe. And it just. You know, Why you gotta rub it in their face. Like, that is the most hypocritical thing a Christian could possibly say, mm-hmm. because it is the great commission of Jesus Christ to go out and change people's minds yep. and make them converts. It says angels will sing in heaven for every sinner that, that prays to God. So for them to say like. Why are you trying to change the way people think? It's like, well, I'm not even trying to. For one, I'm not out there knocking on doors. I put up a few, like, kind of humorous memes. And uh, I'm not putting up, like, you know, I've seen some crazy memes like Muhammad and Jesus fucking each other. Just horrible blasphemous stuff. I'm not doing nothing like that, you know. Don't look on my page, then. (laughs) (laughs) Well, well, no, I mean, I'm part of some groups that share that and stuff, but. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just funny that the victim card that they play. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, see, see, but the yep. Dad, 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 daddy, 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 dad, dad, dad. Oh, seriously, it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love Family Guy. Uh, we used to do that with. I used to call it the mommy look, where I'd say, "Hey, mom, look at me," and she's like, "Uh huh." Like you're obviously not looking. Oh no! And I was like, "Mom, mom, mom, mom." She's really? like, "What?" And I'm like, "Look at me." See, if I did that, I get smacked. I know this. Oh. So, like, one thing I, I oh. definitely uh, have experienced because uh, I, I'm still friends with a lot of people I went to uh, Christian uh, high schools and colleges with. And people who are now pastors that I'd gone to the seminary with. And what was interesting was uh, probably about a year and a half ago or so, I posted something on Facebook that I was going to be cleaning up my friends list because I'd been getting into debates that were really not fun. Just long, uh, dragged out arguments with other former Adventists, now atheists, uh, (laughs) who were were having these debates. And there were several who were... uh, still Christian, who are like, wait, please don't unfriend me. I really like seeing other perspectives. Aww. And you may be getting a bit of that with some of your fans that just won't leave. They want to see that <laughs> I, other I perspective. Some of them are doing that. Some people even told me, they're like, I, 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 I appreciate what you guys are doing. And some of them even told me, they're like, hey, I, I, I see the humor in it, you know. Uh, and, um, but... You know, some people just take things so seriously. It's it's coincidentally the same people that are that are just waving a big flag against political correctness, and mm-hmm. uh, the same people that are that are out there just throwing stones left and right at other people. Um, I I still have a feeling that some of the especially if go ahead. Uh, I was just saying that um, I think that some of the loudest people out there are probably the, some some of the ones with the biggest doubts. And, you know, you used to be this, this awesome point of light for them. But now you're like, hey, I, I can't follow that anymore. And they're like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> and, you know, you just kind of pulled the chair out for, from under them. So I understand some rage, but, you know, some of them are just asses. Man, yeah, yeah. You, have, you, have a serious, you have a serious opportunity here to, you know, be a, another person to look up to for, for some of your old fans and, you know, bring them along perhaps, you know, or, or at least just to show them that, you know, atheists can be good people as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you sticking with the same style of music? Yeah. 
I was going to say, because it is kind of funny that the, <laughs> one of the most unchristian types of music is um, considered death metal or something along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> there you guys are, you're really trying to, you're like, yeah, we're no, we're... We're the good guys. We're Christian death metal. <laughs> and it was like, oh, not so much anymore. <laughs> well, you know, in, in the, in like the, um, in like this hardcore type genre that's going on, there's a lot of Christian bands, um, like Fit for a King, For Today, um, Devil Wears Prada, a lot of these bands. And, um, the, uh, the message behind it tends to, you know, they, they try to have like an aggressive undertone as far as the mm-hmm. way the lyrics are comprised. Um, and, uh, so that appeals to, um, you know, just the, the metal head, I guess, is what they're trying to do there. But then, you know, if you, if you delve into the meaning of the lyrics, you know, maybe they could be talking about, you know, anything, it, it, something about Jesus and stuff like that. Uh, it's, there's definitely a marketing to it, even in the way you write. Um, the way that these guys write, um, there's a formula to it, and they are. I'm, I'm not doubting that some 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 of these guys are writing from their heart, but uh, you know, you can only be like talk mean and be like, "Damn, you're to glorify Jesus!" Like, <laughs> so many times until until people are like, you know, it, it just it's it's repeating itself eventually. There's a lot of big issues going on in life, and religion is not keeping up with the mm-hmm. answers. Religion does not hold the answers to our economic problems, to our cultural problems, to our to our to our segregation problems. It doesn't hold the answer to any of this. You know, you know I mean, I, I I've I, I've I've really a lot of the books I've read is as has, uh, has credited religion to a part of our evolution to where religion played a part in our evolution, like the, those who had the better evolution, I mean, the better religion perhaps survived <laughs> more than someone else that had a shittier religion. Hmm. And, oh, wow. Uh, I'm right. Uh, Religious Darwinism. We we're just coming to a time where we don't need that. So it's almost like religion is kind of like the appendix of our body. We're like, Man. We're like, well, this doesn't do a goddamn thing other than blow up sometimes. <laughs> and, and, and and kill us. Yeah. I mean, like, there was a time in the future where it had a role, and it was, you know, it, I could see, you know, why, you know, somebody Poor little appendix gets no respect. Murdering. Come <laughs> here. So you mentioned that you read Come a lot. Here. What kind of things were you reading? Um, I read a lot of Sam Harris, uh, other than oh. The God Delusion. God uh, Delusion. I really liked his book, Waking Up. Um, hmm. by the time I read Waking Up, I was already an atheist. So I was kind of like going through this reprogramming process with my head because yep. like I would find myself just automatically praying sometimes. And then I'd just like stop and look up and I'd be like, yeah, I don't even know who the fuck you are no more. And <laughs> so I think that book kind of really helped me find, um, uh, uh, kind of like a spirituality. I don't know if you're familiar with Sam Harris, but he's obsessed mm-hmm. with atheist spirituality. And mm-hmm. uh, at the same time, I'm not quite as passionate as uh, as Sam is about it, but uh, it, it really did help me like calm down and quit being so freaked out about like, ah, what's going on? And I think that that was another, uh, another thing that got me into science and stuff like that. You know, I just felt like after I gave up religion, I remember I watched Cosmos and after I watched Cosmos, I thought, I'm a dumb motherfucker, man. I've never, I've never learned about <laughs> any of this stuff just because I, you, as, as a Christian, not, I mean, not all of them, but you, you have a tendency of just being like, I don't need to know about that. God created it. God's in mm-hmm. charge of this. You know? And, yeah. and it, whenever you get to looking into science, it's actually really fascinating. And it's, it's really amazing. Hang yeah. on, guys. Sure. All right. And we'll go ahead and take our last break. If you like this show, consider giving us some financial support. We make it really easy with one-time donations or to support us on a per-episode, monthly, or even annual basis using PayPal or Patreon. Find out more at AtheistNomads.com. Use the links on the right side of the page. One dollar an episode is all we ask. Please, think of the kittens. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, the kittens. (laughs) The problem with kittens is they turn into cats. 
So, Shannon, do I see a 420 on your on your hand? Oh, no, it's just a 20. Uh, I've got a lot of... Well, it looks like on the top of your hand, it, it says 420 on a clock. Oh, uh, no, it just looks that way. It's actually uh, 520. That's what time Zoe was ah. born. Oh, so oh. Cool. oh. nice. <laughs> Okay. As you can see yeah, in the camera, I, it does look like 420. I've had people call, uh, like ask me that many times. <laughs> They're like, "Oh, it's about time to light up, man!" And you're like, "Ah, eh, no." Yeah, I, I noticed like the you have the clock up on your shoulder to get a thing for time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Times, uh, times taken away. I, you know, I, um, what there's a, a lot of my tattoos uh, need to be finished, but whenever I let go of my religion i really i remember it was it was like when it was a few weeks later and i looked down and like this arm here has got greek scripture from oh, wow. second corinthians and and matthew and uh i uh okay hang on <laughs> and i just kind of looked down and i was like oh my gosh what are you gonna do now you know? <laughs> <laughs> you're like shoot i have a whole sleeve yeah. Uh, zombie Jesus. I, so, Zom- yeah, zombie Jesus. <laughs> I got his mom too. Zombie Jesus. Yeah. That's what Easter's all about, right? <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I only have one right. tattoo. It no, was. I... Uh, this shirt will come up far enough. Oh God! Don't. Oh, no, you're white. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but see, uh, um, he's red. He's freckled. Atheist symbol. I got that for the uh, fifth anniversary of me leaving the church. Sure. I got that right here. Oh, nice. see, I like that version uh, that better. Was, that's that way cooler. Like, I mean, I uh, the, they're both. That awesome. was my like. Uh, You're rebranding. Um, you know, I was like, you know, I got all these religious tattoos, <laughs> and someone was like, "What if you decide not to be an atheist?" Because when you got those tattoos, you were like, and "I was like, you know, what? I, I think at this point in time, I've made enough bad, bad, bad decisions." <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like, know what? That, I think. Just put yeah. it all down. It, put it, it down and eat. This time a lot. And yeah. I look back, you know, like somebody was like, well, maybe you could get all your religious tattoos removed. I was like, you know what? No, I'm not no. going to do that because no. that was who I was back mm-hmm. then. And like, I think that you that'd be a lie if you took them off. It, that and they look yeah, really right. cool. And, oh. and, and it goes for a good conversation starter. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, I mean, I mean, if you tried to even take them off or cover them up, I mean, that'd be not being honest with who you are or, or who you were. Now, that's a part of your like life. Shit. You just gotta own it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not tatted. I'm boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got the. Okay. I got I just, the. Uh, got denied a radiology program at my uh, college because of my tattoos. Oh right. I thought I'd be able to get in there, but uh, they, uh, the the school here at MSSU doesn't allow tattoos, uh, visible tattoos, but. Uh, they said it was due to clinicals. They said I couldn't get in for clinicals, but ironically, uh, I'm going to build to go into the surgical technology program, and there's no problem with clinicals. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I would almost, I would almost encourage you to fight that. But surgical techs is actually that's pretty sweet. That's a pretty yeah. sweet thing to do. Not as cool as radiology. Yeah, I, uh, I'm big I into MRIs. I, I did. Uh, get a hold of the dean, and w- I had a set down with them, and they just kind of gave me the same story. And um, I had the Joplin Globe the newspaper contact me here in town, and they were wanting to follow up. And I I didn't really want to blast the college that I go to publicly in our right. hometown newspaper. I thought about it. I was really upset there for a while. And perhaps if I wouldn't have found surgical technology, I'd still be a little sour. But uh, <laughs> whenever I, I spoke with that girl, she told me I could get in. I was so happy. I was like in tears because I've, I've had uh, I've put a lot of classes towards healthcare, and to tell me that I can't even do anything in healthcare, mm-hmm. you know. And that's what I'm passionate about. That's what the school, the best thing the schools offer. They don't have like no space program over here in Joplin, Missouri, or anything. Sure. So no, healthcare uh, is awesome. It, it's and it's. And it's going to be a struggle because there is going to be a lot of religious influences on it. Um, mm, you can't not, not work in a hospital yeah. that's owned by a church or something. So it's it's tough, but so worth it. 
The human mm-hmm. body is just amazing. Yeah. That is one thing I have learned. <laughs> it's it's pre- pretty crazy, the, the stuff I learned in anatomy and physiology and stuff. That it, it's really awesome that it, it came right after this transition. You know, I think that uh, it just... It just maximized my uh, my uh, excitement to learn, you know, about all that kind of stuff. That's mm-hmm. awesome because once you start to look at the human body really in depth, you're like, no God would do this. <laughs> this is this is cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now there's some weird things about the human body that make absolutely no sense. There's this one nerve that runs uh, from fish. It runs from your brain to your face, and it's only connected about that far from the brain to the face. Mm -hmm. And as we've evolved and we've gotten this neck, it's kind of did this dip down into us, and it comes back up our neck. (laughs) And they were wondering if uh, if that kind of defect happened in other creatures, and they took a – it was a Richard Dawkins video, actually, and they dissected a whole – Giraffe. The snack. giraffe. I remember mm-hmm. that. The vagus yeah, nerve? That, yep. that thing went all the way down that giraffe's neck. All yep. the way back up. Holy shit. Like, damn. That's, that's pretty cool. That, I think that it was wasn't design at all. It was like a 22 <laughs> foot long nerve. Yeah. And, you know, I, I worked in uh, blood plasma for a while and I uh, got to deal with people having hypotensive reactions, uh, also known as vasovagal reactions. And. <laughs> That's that damn vagus nerve. It can cause all kinds of problems. <laughs> yeah. yeah the Dawkins true. is cool, and, know, and I love the science, but... About all that stuff. Uh, this semester was filled up with a lot of, like, microscopic biology, and we mm. learned from the cellular cellular up. Nice. That's, that's the way you really get to, to understand it. Starting at yeah. the lowest level. Dawkins yeah, was always cool, and I love the science. Uh, but, fuck. but I'm more of a Hitchens guy. I love the, the verbal smackdowns. Yeah, I dig some Hitchens a lot. Uh, Hitchens just had a, had, a, had a way for being able to expose the God of Abraham for what he really is and on any, any particular matter. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and he never failed to pull out to to point out the uh, the shittiness of that god, you know. Oh yeah, and so he much also, stuff overlooked. He also he had this amazing for. technique that uh, whenever he was going to say something, he he would like take a breath right after saying like "and" or "if" or something like that, so that you're like, okay, and this. And then keep on going, so you didn't have really a chance to interrupt him. You just like keep on going, just like fucking freight train your ass. Oh. <laughs> but oh man, yeah, seriously, that that guy was the best orator I've heard in ages. I oh. kind of began the whole movement of new atheism, I believe. I'm sure there was someone before him, but um, but it pretty much was. Dawkins, Dennett, Harris, and Hitchens. Mm-hmm. But um, as I recall, uh, uh, Ian Hersey Ali was supposed to be part of that also, be a fifth horseman. So hmm. he called him the four horsemen for a while. But yeah, she just wasn't able to, to, to be a part of that, which is too bad. But Yeah, and yeah. There, there were a few others earlier, but the, the books didn't make it onto the bestseller lists and uh, didn't really help launch the, the movement as, as we know it. True. Yeah, Dennett. Dennett's cool. I He's just really dry as fuck. I think that science is one of the biggest enemies towards religion. Mm-hmm. Science has only been around for like true science has only been around for like 150 years, uh, and um, since the rise of science, I mean, like if you really think about the timeline of religion, if religion has existed for this long. Science has existed for this long. Yep. yep. And it's done a number. It's, it's, I mean, if science was dropping nuclear bombs, religion would be, you know, I guess science does kind of literally drop nuclear bombs, but 
<laughs> <laughs> That's one of the things that that is one of the weirdest arguments I've had thrown at me by Christians. Who are like, you think science is so great? It made nuclear bombs, and I'm like, oh yeah. I mean, what wow. is this? What is this? Doesn't make your God any more true? Yeah, and religion made the. <laughs> Jihadists the bombers. and uh, the Spanish Inquisition, uh, 30 years war that destroyed a third of, of Germany's population, crusades. You go through the list and, yeah, religious is uh, share. Hi. 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 Hey, hi. <laughs> hey. Tell them your name. What's your name? Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. I'm Wes. You are the uh, youngest guest we've had on the show. So welcome Yay. to the Atheist Nomads. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Here, wait, wait. Don't touch any of this stuff. <laughs> uh, we well, got to a nap here pretty soon. I think we're going to yeah. go to the carnival tonight. Alrighty. Oh, what? You're lucky. Go to the carnival. Man. Okay, I'm jealous. <laughs> you got a cool day. Yeah, it's just one of those little rinky dink carnivals that come through sometimes, but. Oh, hey. Nice. She likes them. Heck yeah. All right, man. This has actually been fun. I'm, I'm yeah. glad we finally got a chance to talk with you. <laughs> yep. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for joining I, us. I really, I, I apologize again for jumping off, off and on. Uh, I expected to have kind of have her down for a nap by the time I sat down and talked and stuff. And our day has been crazy. My internet wasn't working that well earlier and stuff. Nah, no, no worries. Cool. All right. All yeah, right. Yeah. We we don't do the fifteen minute interview thing. So hey, it's all good. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, hang in there and, and, uh, hopefully everything uh, keeps going well for you. It sounds like hey. you're off to a good start. Also, do you have anything to I really appreciate you guys having me on too? And, um, and, uh, I mean, we, we've got uh, some tours coming up. Uh, yeah. we're, we're definitely, you got something to market Colorado and Michigan and California and uh... like New Mexico and stuff. So if we come near you guys <laughs> or something, you guys should try to come out and see one of the shows. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, is Idaho or Washington on the list? Um, no, we're going, we're going to... Um, I think the closest to Idaho would be Michigan. Would be or, where? Illinois, Michigan. That's probably still pretty far for you. Uh, from Idaho, that's about a two-day drive. Uh, yeah, <laughs> long, uh, long two day drive. <laughs> Colorado well, is a day and a half. Uh, tell you what, Shannon, what have you got to market? What uh, give us some some uh, info, links, sites, anything like that? Um, well, you can find the Order of Elijah um, in like on all the social networks. We're the only Order of Elijah out there. And, nice. Uh, <laughs> So, if you Google us, um, <laughs> lean back, lean back. If you Google us or get on YouTube or something, you'll be able to find us. We've got a lot of lyric videos. If you can't understand the lyrics, or oh, good, yeah, you know, I know I understand that not everyone's into it. So maybe you know if you know a metalhead uh, nephew or something that you know might enjoy it. Um, I think that our our last album was written in the time that I, I became an atheist. So, uh, you know, there's the, this last album was written kind of in a, it, it's called war at heart. So, I mean, that's kind of exactly what it's about. Uh, mm. there's some songs written during the transition and some written like after I'd completely given up religion. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I, I hate, I hate saying I lost my faith. I, I think it was friendly atheist said that he's like we need to he's like atheists need to quit saying you lost faith because that makes it sound like you lose something. He's like you, you actually you actually gained something and uh, or, or uh, you know he and so I I like to say that I shed my faith. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's just a process. I think everybody has got the ability to come out on. 
Um, and uh, I'm, uh, I know that our next albums are probably not going to be quite as liked as from the Christian community, but um, I, I think that uh, I think the atheist the community will be able to relate with us pretty well. Yeah, right. don't touch my nailers. <laughs> Yeah, there's another musician I really want to talk to you pretty soon. His name's David Bazan. He's more of an indie artist, but uh, uh, he was really big in like a Pedro the Lion and a few other uh, Christian bands in the past, but hmm, he's made a hell of a transition over the last couple of years like you have. So, uh, nice. Uh, definitely not your sound, but um, <laughs> yeah. if you want to hear some progression of uh, you know his his path as well i mean he's a really good guy to look up uh, very cool nice i'll try anyways yeah again thanks a bunch yep. and uh, we'll let you know when this is coming out it's going to be a couple weeks because we're trying to uh, uh david uh dustin's going on going out of touch for yep. all right we'll have a lot of fun at the carnival and uh thank you both for for joining us bye zoe Bye. Hey, bye. 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 Thanks for having bye, me. Bye. I really appreciate it. And let me know, and I'll set it up on our Twitter and all that kind of stuff too. Oh, oh yeah, I gotta do your plugs. Yep. Awesome. Okay, man. Hey, thanks again, guys. Uh, before we we close out, uh, I do want to uh, announce something that we've been talking about a bit. Uh, okay. In September, uh, we're going to be doing a twelve-hour uh, streamathon. We'll oh my goodness! Raising yep. money for the uh, Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Light the Night, trying to help Woo-hoo. fight blood cancers, and uh, there'll be lots of drinking. Uh, <laughs> Wesley and I haven't talked all the details, just <laughs> that it will happen. Um, I'm yeah, starting to I'm think sure of, we'll have some unannounced guests on there. Yep, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking of a, a fundraising drinking game. Oh God! Uh, for twelve hours. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to have the worst case of beer shits ever. <laughs> Depends on the game. Something like every uh, $200 for, or $20 for the first $200 have to have a beer, then every 50 after that. Oh, God. That's... Fuck. For 12 hours, you got to make sure there's enough... You, you have it at a, a frequency that you can actually keep a buzz going. True. Oh, God. Or, okay, you so, know... So some asshole's just gonna give like a hundred bucks and make us fucking chug yeah yeah that's what i'm hoping Great. for i'm yeah not. <laughs> this is sounding less fun <laughs> we have to do this on saturday so i can get all my yep it will be a saturday it'll be in september after it starts cooling down a little bit and oh right before God. late the night yeah and so yeah this will be this will be a lot of fun so listeners watch out for the details um because <laughs> It, it's coming. So, listeners, if you want to give Wesley the beer shits, you know, <laughs> don't need a lot of money. Keep tuned. And Wesley, you don't have to, to partake in the, the drinking. Oh, yes, This will be for... for... <laughs> it'll just be Sprite okay. all up in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it'll be a squirt. Thank you. All oh, I'm mouth. sorry. Squirt is so much better. <laughs> all righty. And uh, we'll be back next. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anybody else who drinks that. I, I have on occasion. Well, yeah, like in the 90s. Squirt's uh, all right. I've had well, it actually, last... regular squirt's good, but Ruby Red's okay. But, oh, yeah, well, Ruby Red. Original. It's probably the... been five years or so since oh. I've had squirt. But... Ruby Red, that used to be like the special treat in our family. Ruby Red's good, but I like just plain old original. Yeah. I like Sprite. It mixes with stuff well, too. I can make my wine spritzers. <laughs> it's just squirt. Fucking vodka all up in this. <laughs> all up in your mouth. All up in your mouth. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we will be back next week with news. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash atheistnomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. Theme music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, 
This has been the Atheist Nomads.